Hi, everyone. It's an honor to be here uh, today. First, I would like to thank the committee for selecting our paper as uh, the best was uh, bioinformatic graduate paper this year. And as ha uh, mentioned before, uh, this is actually a joint work of uh, many people, and I'm only one of the first, uh, well, five first authors, and will present on the behalf of the five of us. So our paper is called Early Prediction of Circuitry Failure in the Intensive Care Unit Using Machine Learning, and it is also published on Nature Medicine. It is a joint effort between ETH and the University Hospital in Bern, uh, known as Ingersspital in German. So uh, all the German speakers in the audience, uh, please forgive my pronunciation. And uh, there are two medical doctors from the University Hospital in Bern, and many people from the Biomedical Informatics Group and the Machine Learning and Computational Biology Lab at ETH working on that. So I would also like to take this chance to thank everyone involved for their hard work and contribution, which make the paper possible. Uh, without further ado, let me share more details about the project with you. So here's a picture taken from an intensive care unit, uh, as you really know, an ICU. And patients who end up in the ICU are those who are critically ill and need to be closely monitored by uh, lots of medical devices and also closely observed by the clinicians. And each medical device here measure like a physiological signal such as heart rate, blood pressure, uh, body temperature. And the clinician also take notes on what they observe and also like send the patient's blood samples, urine sample and so on for lab analysis uh, if necessary. And these patients also are given drugs uh, to improve their physiological state to some extent. So over time, we have a large collection of time series data of physiological variables, lab tests, observation nodes, and pharmaceutical variables, even for a single patient. And if we leave this large amount of data upon human analysis, it will certainly overwhelm uh, the clinicians, especially they need to take care of like several ICU patients at the same time. On the other hand, such wealth of data has facilitated data-driven machine learning research in tackling uh, ICU-related clinical problems. However, a lot of the uh, recent work focused on predicting mortality uh, or length of stay in the ICU, which is of uh, little use in helping clinicians making further treatment decisions. But organ system failure uh, will provide clinicians with more helpful information in their decision making, and organ system failure are not a rarity among ICU patients. So there are organ system failure of different kinds. We can have like circulatory failure, which is associated with the heart, um, respiratory failure, which is asso associated with the lung, neural failure, renal failure, and so on. In our project, we focus on circulatory failure and we have developed an early warning system for that. So yes, not only we want to predict it, we want to predict it early. Another aspect that motivates us to build such a system is uh, uh, to alleviate alarm fatigue uh, resulted from abnormality detection by the medical devices as well. And we call our system circus, short for circuitry early warning system. So here's a diagram of the circus framework. It has multiple components, but I will explain them one by one. The data we use is provided by the University Hospital in Bern. It has electronic health records from 2005 to 2016. There are about 50,000 patients, more than 7,000 variables, and about 3 billion measurements. So it's a really big data. And the highest measurement frequency is every two minutes. However, not all 7,000 variables are relevant to circulatory failure, and also uh, most of the important ones are actually available after 2008 due to a medical system update in the hospital. So we apply a few filtering criteria. In the end, we just keep electronic health records from uh, patients and variables that satisfy the uh, listed criteria in the uh, gray box here. So after patient and variable filtering, we implemented variable-specific uh, processing, one of which is removing artifacts of different kind that we find in the data, including 
um, strange signals caused by the detachment of medical devices from the patient by accident, and data and information entered wrong by the clinicians, and duplication records, and many others. Another uh, specific processing we do is merge uh, drugs given in different forms, such as injection, infusion, tablet, into a unified one. The last step of pre-processing is variable merging, where we merge variables with similar uh, medical concepts into a meta variable, which is more general across different hospital ICUs, and we also reduce the number of variables down to 209 meta variables. So data pre-processing is actually an important step towards uh, better machine learning. However, this is often underestimated. Uh, we, however, like spend a great amount of time and effort, which is about 5% a year, on developing a data pre-processing framework that can take uh, raw ICU data and clean it up and then transform it into a machine learning usable format. And we also publish the curated ICU data to PhysioNet for academic research use. And we call it HIRID or HIRID. Uh, so it has higher time resolution than the public uh, the existing public ICU data sets, such as MIMIC and EICU. So after pre-processing, uh, we can extract features and labels from the data. Uh, since we are interested in predicting circulatory failure, we need to know what counts as circulatory failure. And based on the medical knowledge of the clinicians in the project, they provide us with a definition of circulatory failure events. And with that, we annotate each time point of the patient as whether the patient is experiencing circuitry, uh, circuitry failure or not. Uh, however, we don't want to predict what's happening now. We want to predict the circuitry, uh, circulatory failure in advance. So the final label we actually use is whether the patient will have circulatory failure in the next X hours. And based on the experience of the clinicians, uh, we choose X to be A, which is also how long a shift lasts in the ICU. So now that we have the labels, we can extract the features. Uh, well, we also extract the features. Uh, and first, we project all time series onto a five minute time grid, and we impute the values at the time point where the actual measurement is missing using a data tap, a imputation, uh, which I will not go into detail here because of the time constraint. And after that, we extract four types of features from the dynamic variables, namely shapelets, uh, which is a time series motif, and instability history, and multi-resolution summaries, and measurement intensity. And besides those features, we also have static information about the patient, such as age, height, gender, and so on. So in the end, most of the patient can be uh, represented as a time series of feature vectors of size about 5,000. And for machine learning, we actually look at four different models. Uh, one is LightGBN, which is a gradient boosting tree. Another one is LSTN, which is a type of recurrent neural networks that is suitable for modeling time series. And uh, we also look at clean decision tree and logistic regression. We found that LightGBM uh, performed the best among these four models, and that's also what we use in the end in Circus. So before I move on uh, to the results slides, I want to explain two important metrics that we look at in the project, uh, alarm precision and event recall. So the clinicians can select a special, and our system will raise alarms whenever uh, the score has uh, passed the threshold. And uh, an alarm is considered true when there's an circulatory failure event within the next eight hours and falls otherwise. And a circulatory failure event is considered captured by the alarm if there's uh, more than one alarm within the eight hour windows before it, and it is considered missed if there's no alarm at all in the eight hour window before it. And we also apply a uh, silencing strategy to reduce the number of false alarm as well. So another experimental setup that we consider important but often ignore in a lot of the study is temporal splitting, where uh, the test data and validation data are collected in later years than the training data. 
the logic behind it is we want to analyze the model chained from older data on the data that is collected in the future, which is a more realistic setting uh, than just random splitting. So we apply this logic to the five temporal splits we use for hyperparameter selection and the overall split for final assessment. So now uh, we move on to the result, but first I want to say we also developed two uh, type of circus model, one we call circus slide and the other one we call circus slide. <coughs> and circus slide is a light version that only used the 20 most important variables that we found through feature analysis. And also we can visualize the feature importance as shown in the right plot here for uh, interoperability. And it's very helpful for the clinician to understand what's going on in the prediction as well. And circus also don't use all like 209 meta variable. It uses uh, the 112 most important variable derived from the top 500 features. And we compare both circus and circus slides with a baseline that try to mimic uh, how clinicians would predict circuitry failure in advance uh, in clinics. So the baseline is actually just like a plain decision tree based on uh, variables included in the circuitry failure definition that would be the mean arterial pressure lactate and the vessel pressure. And from the precision recall curves uh, plot we can see here, both circus and circus slide has outperformed the baseline uh, by quite a lot. And at the recall rate of 90%, we can have an alarm precision of 30%. And what we also see here is that circus slide almost have as high performance as circus by using only a very small subset of variables. And the uh, advantage of that is circuit slide is more transferable across different hospitals and it requires lower computational loss cost as well because we use uh, fewer variables. Okay. So now we want to evaluate how many alarms uh, per hour circuit light can generate uh, compared to a baseline method that mimic how alarms are usually generated in the real ICU setting. And this uh, baseline method just detect any abnormal value in some variables and raise an alarm whenever it detects abno uh, abnormality. Uh, for fair comparison, we apply the same silencing strategies and also we uh, let both methods to use the same number of variables. So any abnormal method also use 20 most important variables as well. And uh, the baseline method have a recall rate of uh, 97, oh well, 95.7 percent. And uh, the standard circuit slide that we look at only have a recall of like 90 percent. So we try to adjust the uh, threshold of circuit slide a little bit so that the uh, recall rate of circuit slide will also match with the any abnormal value baseline method. So in the middle, you can see the adjusted circuit slide version. However, if you compare both circuit slide with different threshold with the baseline method, we see that the number of alarm being generated every hour has significantly reduced. So it means that circuit system can actually help uh, alleviate the alarm fatigue to some extent. So next, we want to see how early the alarms are prior to the circuitry failure because if all alarm are just generated a few minutes before circuitry failure, it's still not very useful. But what we see here is that for standard uh, circuit slide was 90% uh, recall, we still can achieve like 81.8% of recall even two hours prior to circuitry failure. And uh, with the distribution of first alarm time prior to the event, we also see that the on average, circus can raise uh, the first alarm about 2.5 hours prior to actual circuitry failure as well. So our aim is that the system can help clinicians to be aware of the circuitry failure much earlier in advance. However, this need still need to be tested in real clinical settings. So. Lastly, we want to analyze uh, how transferable our model is to different ICU data sets. 
because we don't just want to build a system that is specific to one ICU. We want it to be applicable to a wide range of ICUs, not only just in Switzerland, but also in other countries as well. So we took a, a public ICU data set called Mimic, and it is uh, collected from the US. Uh, the, one of the big differences between Hirid and Mimic uh, is that Mimic has a much lower time resolution. And we compare the performance of CircusLight on both Mimic dataset and Hirid dataset. So uh, these two plots uh, may be a little bit hard to understand in a very short time, but the main message here is that uh, the performance of CircusLight fine-tuned on Mimic is better than the circuit slide that's entirely retrained on Mimic because the fine-tuned version has incorporated knowledge from both ICU data. And what we also discover is that uh, the performance drop is mainly uh, going from HIRID to Mimic data is mainly due to the course of time resolution in Mimic data. So to summarize, we develop a state-of-the-art machine learning system for predicting circuitry failure. And we also publish this uh, HERA data for academic research use. And the system performance is well enough to be of clinical utilities because it can raise uh, an alarm as early as like 2.5 hours prior to circuitry failure on average. And it's transferable to different hospitals, ICUs, even like uh, worldwide. And the missing pieces is that uh, we still need to validate this model in real clinical setting. And that's uh, challenging. <laughs> and what we are also currently doing is building similar models for other organ system uh, failure, such as renal and respiratory failure. So some final words. Uh, so this is a very uh, complex project in the sense that it is interdisciplinary and it uses like data of a very large scale and very complex and it has involved many people. But it's still an ex exciting journey for me to work, uh, to work with so, ma so many excellent people. And uh, also I got the opportunity to work closely with Mactic medical doctors and get their perspective on the analysis of machine learning performance. And such opportunity is not very common in like a lot of the ML in healthcare research. Um, and I'm also happy to see that uh, the system we develop has the potential to be realized and hopefully make a positive impact. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I'm also open to any questions.